Hi everyone. Uh, so today we are going to discuss IPv6 or Internet Protocol version 6, which is actually part of network layer. So IPv, uh, IPv4 or IPv6, they work on network layer. And the job of network layer is to carry data from one network to another. For example, in our case, if we say we have these two networks, then the job of the network layer is to carry data from one network to another. So the network layer actually receives data from upper layer and then it adds header on top of that and which is known as a packet. And in that packet, in the header part, we have the logical addresses. So the network layer uses logical addresses to identify or to locate these nodes on the network. And with the help of that logical address, the job of the network layer is to transfer the data to this the destination. So it means the network layer also has to perform the routing as well. Now for understanding, let's suppose that this is the network, global network. We have many nodes which are using internet services and they all need, so every computer or every node is supposed to have a globally unique address to identify them or to locate them. Like we as a person, we have our name, we have a street name, we have city name like this. So every node also need to have address. And IPv4 actually gave us a way to give addresses to these computers. And IPv4, we actually have 32 bits and these 32 bit binary numbers are used to assign addresses to these users. So we can use different combination of these IP, these 32 bits. For example, this first, so you can see here, this, this combination of these 32 bits assigned to this user, next combination to next user, third combination to third one. In this way, we can assign these all different 32 bit combinations to different users. And at maximum, we can have these many addresses, 4 billion addresses, which, can, which we can assign to different users by using these 32 bits, that is 2 raised to power 32. Now let's suppose we have the same network and we have IPv4, so we can assign them to uh, these IP addresses and this works fine. But we saw that there's a limit of IPv4 and if the number of user increases like this, looking at the potential of the internet, everyone are the number of users and number of uh, electronic gadgets is increasing. And for example, at some point, we don't have more addresses. So for example, at this point, we don't have addresses, we are full and uh, now we, are, we don't have more IP addresses to assign to more new users. Now, as a temporary solution, some of the technologies were introduced and they are still in use, which are helping us to, to live with the current number of IPv4 addresses. And these technologies are DHCP and NAT network address translation, CIDR and VLSN. So these are the technologies which we are not going to discuss today, but they are helping us to, to, to even uh, to, to help us to live with that, that IPv4 number of addresses. So for example, in DHCP, instead of assigning the uh, IP address permanently to some users, they are assigned dynamically. So in this way, we are going to save our lives using these technologies. But Actually, there are some other things coming up like Internet of Things where we need the IP addresses for everything. In that case, are uh, still uh, to, to whatever problems we are facing these days, this IPv6 was introduced in 1990s. So in that, uh, so this was almost 1998 and 1999, the IPv6 was introduced. And in this IPv6, instead of 32 bits, 128 bits were used to assign to the host. So it means now we will have this long IPv address, that is IPv6 address, but the advantage is that, that now we will have 2 raised to power 60 
So 2 raised to the power 128. So this will be 128. So 2 raised to the power 128 bits, we will have these many IP addresses to be assigned to different nodes. And today the world population is this. So you can see the difference between the world population and the available IP, these six addresses to us. So we have so many addresses and we can work with Internet of Things. So this is the biggest advantage of IPv6. And now IPv6 uses hexadecimal format to represent IP address, like IPv4 uses decimal notation. IPv6 uses hexadecimal format. And for that purpose, what we do, so the same IPv6 address, we take four bits, binary uh, bits at a time, and we convert them into hexadecimal format, like this. And then we take next four bits, convert them into hexadecimal, and this way we convert the complete IPv6 address into hexadecimal format. And this address is further divided into eight groups, and each group will have four hexadecimal. So what we do, we divide them group, first group, second group, third group. So you can see every group has four hexadecimal uh, digits. And these all groups are divided by colon, or they are separated by the sign of colon. So you can see here, this is the sign of colon. And this will be the uh, final version of IPv6, which we can see and we can use. And these all groups, so this group of four uh, hexadecimal digits are known as quartet. So the first quartet, second quartet, third quartet, in this way we will have eight quartet in a single IPv6 address. So it means IPv6 address will have 128 bits and it will have 32 uh, hexadecimal digits and it will have eight quartet. So the main thing is 128 bits. When we convert them into a hexadecimal format, then it will have 32 hexadecimal digits. And we, when we group them, then we will have eight groups, and each group is known as quartet. So we will have eight quartets. Now, we can actually abbreviate IPv6 because this is too long and we want to be easy. Then we can abbreviate or we can shorten it. And for that, we have some rules. So to understand this thing, let's take an example. So we have this example of IPv6 address, and you can count that these are 32 uh, hexadecimal digits, and we have eight uh, quartet or eight groups. Now to shorten, we have a way, we have some rules by which we can abbreviate that. So the first rule is we can omit leading zeros. So how leading zeros are omitted? For example, take the same IPv6 address and you observe this, that in these of, in this quartet or in these groups, we have zeros. And as per this rule, we can omit or we can remove these leading zeros in this quartet. We can remove leading zero in this quartet. We can remove leading zeros in this quartet. So in this way, we can have we can uh, remove these leading zeros and we can have a new format an improved format of ipv6 here you can see instead of these all four zeros only one time zero is used and then colon and here colon and here you can see these leading zeros have been omitted this 26 has been written here so we have used the first rule to abbreviate them let's move to the second rule and the second rule says that we need to find out the consecutive group of zeros. So now in this uh, result of IPv6, just which is I'm going to copy again here, we have to find out the consecutive groups of zero. You can see here, this is consecutive group of zeros. This is also consecutive group of zeros. So there are three zeros and there are two zeros. So we can take one group of consecutive zero and replace that with the colon colon sign. But we can do it only once. So let's take a longer group. So we are taking this one. And now 
by using this rule we will have a new format or new form of this ipv6 address so just this copy same part 0 0 same part 1 same part only these this group will be removed and this will be removed with or this will be replaced by colon colon sign and now this will be our abbreviated form of this ipv6 address which we can do with every ipv6 if we if we see these characteristics there now if we can abbreviate them then we can also expand the abbreviated ipv6 address and for understanding let's again take the ipv6 in the ab abbreviated form so this is the abbreviated form of ipv6 address and how to expand it for that we have rules so the first rule is add zeros on left to make it a group of four hexa digits because every quartet or every group has four hexadecimal digits so we have to make them four and to make them four what we do we add zeros on the left side so let's repeat the same and what we do we add zeros on the left side so what we have done i'm going to show you this is already four group of four hexadecimal digits that's okay but here we see there is only one between these colon we have only one so what we do we add these three zeros here also we add three zeros here also we add three zeros and here we have two digits we only need two zeros here so now we have followed this rule and now from this ipv6 format we have come to this so the second rule is replace this colon colon sign with a group of four zeros until they make eight groups in total so if you remember in ipv6 we have eight groups or eight quartets but in this case you can see we have one two three four and five quartets we have to make it eight it means we have to add, add here three groups what we do i'm going to repeat the same ip6 address here and now we have to remove this colon colon sign and we have to add group of three so we have to add three groups so of zeros four zeros so i'm going to show here this is this is three quartet or three group of zeros so these are three and this is five and finally we will get this ipv6 address where you can see we have eight groups uh, and we have this eight quartets and we have 32 bit hexadecimal digits so this is a valid ipv6 which is actually the expanded version of this ipv6 it means we can expand ipv6 we can also abbreviate ipv6 for our easiness otherwise this is 32 bits Oh, sorry this is 128 bits but 32 hexadecimal digits and eight quartets so this was short introduction about ipv6 we will discuss some more features of ipv6 in some other videos and uh, so yes eight so yes so finally just interesting thing to to discuss that actually we are uh, reading this ipv6 but it's it's great to know that what percentage of internet users are actually using this ipv6 today so how much how, how, how what is the percentage of users which is using ipv6 and what percentage of users is still using ipv4 that will be interesting to know and uh, if you know something about this then uh, you, you're welcome to use this comment section and uh, yeah and thank you thank you very much for your time